What's up, Buckeye Nation? Man, I had to jump on here <clears throat> and do this video because just as excited as we all were, as quickly as we all got excited about the recruits, man, oh man, how quickly that excitement can be taken away. Or and some people might feel in a different way about it. But uh, I'm here to talk about this today. My name is Shane Larson, also known as the Game Time Guru or the Boise Buckeye. This is Scarlet and Great or Ohio State football with Scarlet and Great here on YouTube. And um, I'm flying solo again here on the show because we had to bring some breaking news to you guys today as five-star quarterback class of 2024 Dylan Riola decides that he's going to decommit from Ohio State. Here to talk about what that impact is going to be on the Buckeyes and what is um, what is the future of of our commits and how does this have does this have a potential ripple effect with Jeremiah and the other guys that we talked about in our last video literally just two days ago I did a video on how excited we were with Lincoln Kineholtz you know Jeremiah coming over as well as uh, Riola coming over and how the future looked bright for Ohio State and even with the NIL deals we still won it and how massive of a of a win it was for us but I want to talk to you guys about this um, hit that <laughs> hit that subscribe button on on the channel real quick. If uh, if you're a Buckeye nut, let us get to 6,000 subscribers by the Peach Bowl if we could. And uh, let's chat. Let's chat about it today. So first and foremost, we're talking about this five-star who, as you guys know, as I was talking about, he had the potential to bring in a ton of other guys. And the rumor had it is he was actually talking to tons of other guys, tons of defensive prospects. I talked about Peyton Woodyard out of, out of uh, St. John Bosco. Uh, some of these top 30 prospects to potentially come over to Jim Knowles' system. And, you know, Dylan Raiola, as the talent himself, is obviously impactful. But it was more so the other things that come along with it, such as his his recruiting and, and his impact that he has. So now my, my question is, does it have the reverse effect, right? Does it have the reverse effect if he leaves and do, do other people follow suit? Does Jeremiah Smith follow suit? Because I'm reading reports that say that, you know, uh, Dylan didn't tell Jer Jeremiah that he was going to be decommitting and he, he stayed committed. So what does that do to Jeremiah? And I saw one of the comments in here in this video that I did just a couple days ago that it, it's so true. It's just like the rule of sales. Like nothing is nothing is for sure until the dotted line is signed. Right. you got to sign on the dotted line because these days. You know, money's going to start talking and it's going to talk a lot more. You know, was it was it an NIL situation, right? Was it NIL? Um, you know, rumor has it he wants to go over to Nebraska where his uncle's a coach. Uh, Matt Rule's over there. There's more NIL stuff. Where does Ohio State fall in regards to that? That was the big old question that we had. And now we're starting to see it. Um, man, it's just crazy. We lost this talent. But another part of me is is looking at, okay, so the NIL. Let's talk about that for a second, okay? Talk about NIL for a second and where Ohio State stands with name, image, and likeness and where we're standing with the foundation and what's going into it. Why is it that we have a multi-billion dollar industry as far as the, the athletic program at Ohio State? The, you know, we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars per year the football program alone brings into that university. Why is it that we are struggling? And I know the university can't put on the NIL stuff necessarily. Usually it's going to be the boosters and so forth that are going to be able to pay. But what is going on? Like it, it seems so odd to me that we have all this money generated for the program, but we're struggling in the NIL competition. Why is that? What do we need to do? I'm asking you guys, leave a comment and what we need to do in order to be able to compete with the NIL situation. Do more business owners with deeper pockets need to step up? Uh, alumni members. I know Cardale Jones has started his, his whole thing. What do we want to do? Like, what do we need to do in order to get this to work? Because it seems like we're only a year and a half, almost two years into the NIL situation, and we're losing out to Nebraska? We're losing out to Nebraska, soon to be Colorado on the West. Like, we're starting to lose out to some of these programs that you wouldn't expect to be losing out to, not only from a competitive standpoint when it comes to the athletics and the skill set of football, but also we're talking about NIL, we're losing out to these programs. So 
that's one situation. The NIL conversation. Tell me in the comments. Educate me. Something. Let's let's have a conversation here. What do we need to do at Ohio State in order to you know become more attractive with this? Like, do we need more donors? I I don't know. Um, I'm over here in Boise. I might not understand what goes on in, on the backside for the alumni and and whatnot, but I know that Cardale had started the foundation. They've got some good stuff going over there. It's not like they're not able to generate revenue for some of these athletes and ink deals with them, but it obviously is not as appealing as some of these other schools. Uh, so let's, let's talk about it. Leave me a comment. The other thing I wanted to talk about is the competition factor. I do not want to tell a kid what he should or should not do, right? Like these are kids that should be able to go and do what's best for them and put themselves in the best situation. He's a five-star quarterback coming into what we were calling wide receiver. You, you know, like we call that, that Brian Hartline has done his job. And if Jeremiah Smith stays there, I mean, that he's just going to continue to pull in, you know, five-star recruits across the board. You, you've got receivers to throw to, but I'm wondering if the Lincoln Kineholtz signing or uh, commitment that we flipped him from Washington, if that had something to do with it these days, it's like the kids want to go get their bag and they don't want to compete. And that's where I'm wondering if this is really like Raiola has the skill set to play at the next level. So he does well in college. He can play at the next level. He can play in the NFL. I know it's hard to say for a kid that's young like this, but he has that skill set that can get him to the next level. But does he want to compete or does he want to go somewhere where he's going to start immediately and just get his bag and go? You know, the competition factor is tough for me because part of me says, yeah, that's the right decision. Go get your bag. Go get your bag. If you're going to be playing in the NFL, go where you can get some reps, get yourself going. And and go. Maybe they don't want to compete for championships. Maybe they want to make their money and get to the NFL and go do their thing. Like that's what they probably want to do. Can I blame them? I don't know. As a fan of Ohio State, it's 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 very frustrating because it feels like this might become a common theme because the NIL situation has created the wild, wild west in college football. It's just a free for all. But if I were to put myself in that position, you know, flashback 16 years ago, 17 years ago when I, I graduated high school, what would I want to do? Like going in to play playing athletics do i care about winning a championship more than i care about making some money off of my name because i have a pretty big name and I, there's going to be some good deals by the time i'm 20 21 but let's just say i never play football again after college if i could make myself a million dollars or more during that time i can't say i wouldn't do that but it feels like the competition like you see this guy commit over and, and he flips from Washington and he's going to commit over to Ohio state. And you know that that's going to be your competition. He's probably going to have a head up on you over a year at, at Ohio state. So you're going to probably come in and have to fight for a, a spot and possibly not make it as a starter. Did he already start to feel that when Lincoln Kineholtz, uh signed? I have a feeling because up until Kineholtz signed, we didn't have a class of 2023 quarterback. So Riola was probably thinking, you know, in a year after this next year, with Ohio State, he was going to come in and probably start as a true freshman. I bet he believed that in his heart. So when Kineholtz comes over, I wonder if that idea of having to have the competition, you know, kind of freaked him out a little bit. That's what I'm seeing. You know, you had the Quinn Ewers situation. You're seeing it across the board. These kids really want to compete or they want to get their bag. And are they wrong for wanting to do either one of those things? I don't know. Like, it's, it's tough for me to say. It's really tough for me to say. But it is kind of a sad thing for Ohio State because – it's a big loss. It's a massive loss. Uh, dude, this this guy is, we had the number one and number two ranked players in the class of 2024 coming into Ohio State. And I'm worried about the ripple effect. Just as good as it can be on the on the good side, pulling in these recruits, it can have the same effect on the negative side. It's a domino. These guys can uh, pull these other recruits and be like, oh, well, why isn't he going over there? Oh, oh, I can go get my bag at Nebraska. Like, come on, man. Let's, it, it can have a, a negative effect. So, just breaking the news to you guys. It's uh, unfortunate. However, I do think we are in good hands. Uh, we've got some capable quarterbacks going into 2023 next year. And the transfer portal is still there. Um, and I want everybody to remember that. O Ohio State fans here, Buckeye fans, we've got a transfer portal and our school is still super sexy. What we need to figure out and tighten up is somehow is the NIL situation. But we are a sexy school. We have the brand. We have the we have the the championship pedigree. We, we play for championships. You want to say, Oh, we lost to Michigan tears. Okay, cool. But we're still competing for championships. And right now, currently we are still competing for a national championship in two weeks. We'll be playing and we'll be competing to get into a national championship. And that's, that does still speak volumes. It still weighs 
It's just that how long will that be the main factor? Because NIL is starting to pull some kids uh, and I don't blame them. I don't necessarily blame them. Uh, if you're that young and you can make some money, go do so, right? You should be able to, in my opinion, but it does, it does kind of suck as a fan because we want the program to be in good hands moving forward. And that's where I think Ryan Day and his coaching staff are going to have to get really, really creative. So anyway, guys, we appreciate all the support. We wanted to break the news to you today. Uh, like I said, leave us a comment. Let us know uh, what you guys think we can do in the NIL situation. If you guys got thoughts and feelings on it too, leave us a comment. We appreciate everything. Again, we're trying to get to 6,000 subscribers before the Peach Bowl. And uh, we hope that we can get there. But we appreciate everything from you guys. And as always, God bless and go Bucks.